Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and in this video I'm going to look at the Content Creators League, how that's going. I'm going to look at the Midnight Mule FPL League, going to review Game Week 13 and look ahead to Game Week 14 and what my current thoughts and plans are, which is all a bit up in the air at the moment, but I'll try and talk you through my thought process anyway. So the Midnight Mule FPL Mini League, if you're not in it yet, it'd be very nice if you joined. There should be a link hopefully in the description down below. So top scorer was also the top of the league, which is Jacob Eriksson with Skogsgilianton IF. I have murdered that, I expect. He got 74 points and is on a total of a massive 804, which is very, very good. At least I think it is. It's way better than what I'm doing. So his team, uh, Captain Harland, most people had that, but he had Andreas and Almiron. A lot of people weren't playing those two. They're maybe on people's benches. Kane got eight and the rest didn't really do anything. But with a global average of 51, he got a good score. And then his bench was Ward with eight, Williams with six, and then two others that only got two. But his keeper that he chose got eight anyway. So it was only Williams he missed out on. And probably nobody decided to play Nico Williams at home to Liverpool unless they had to anyway. And his transfer was he brought in Cancelo and took out Alexander-Arnold, but there was no real difference in that, so... That had no real effect on the game, but maybe going forward for the next three weeks, Cancelo would be better than Trent. I am down in 26th in the Midnight Mule FPL League. There I am, 26th. I got 50 points, 714 in total. This was my team. I had Haaland captain, as did most people. Mitrovic, 6. Edison got 5, because he got an assist on the goal. And had Trossard not scored against Man City, then Edison and Cancelo would have got a clean sheet. I'm aware that each of us every week could say off oh, this, that and the other didn't happen, then this, that and the other. But it was a particularly good goal by Trossard. So I don't think I made bad choices. I just got one point below average. I got 50 rather than 51. My bench, nothing on the bench. Ward got eight, but I was never going to play Ward over Edison. So I got 50 in total. Game week rank of outside the six million. So that was particularly poor, but there are lots of people who got poor scores. Overall point, 714th, just outside the 1.3 million mark. But that's absolutely fine. I don't mind that. Got ages to go yet. Uh, the last five game weeks, three greens, two red. Going in the wrong direction. But like I said, doesn't matter. We get to reset. Boxing day anyway. I thought this was interesting to show you this. So I'm. this shows that I'm currently 10 points away from the 1 million mark. And then like if you look at the... 100k mark I'm 63 from 100k I'm 94 from 10k but go back to 100k I'm 63 away from 100k and the 4 million mark is 63 behind me so although I'm at 1.3 million I'm as far from 100k as I am 4 million and if you look at for example the 10k mark and if we look at the top the top is 169 points away from me 10k is 94 points away and 500k is 30 points so 10k is actually closer to half a million than top so when people especially near the end of the season they say oh I got top 10k I got top 20k it's worth being aware that they're probably they may well be nearer the 1 million mark than the top mark it just sounds good but not taking anything away from them it's still it's still good to try and go for as good as you can of course I only need two or three rather good weeks and I'll shoot up the rank so I am genuinely not nervous at the moment. I think I'm definitely doing better than I normally do at this time of year. So everything, everything's good. The Content Creators League. This is on FPL Game Week. They keep uh, a league of content creators. If you look at this league and you're not in it, it shows where you would appear. So I'm not in it. I've not got enough followers by about 10,000. Uh, but I can show where I would be. So currently top is Ross. I like to watch his videos. I also watch Harry. He's down in third at the moment. I'm down in 50th, or I would be if I was in the league. There I am, on 714. So Holly's five points ahead of me, Holly Shand. And Andy's, what, eight points ahead of me. I think he's the most popular YouTuber I'm aware of who does the FPL content. Uh, but this is the first page. If I look at the second page, then at least I'm still above Bruno, and I'm still above FPL Mate. FPL Mate's probably the most energetic of the people I watch. He's always very optimistic and has lots of opinions about different things. I don't always agree with what he says, but I still like listening to what he has to say. And that's true for all these YouTubers, actually. There's probably none that I agree with, but it's very interesting to find out their point of view and their reasoning and then decide I agree or I disagree. 
And as you know, I disagree with the whole hits thing. This is to remind me to say, if you've not subscribed, I would really appreciate any subscribers we get. We've got 215 at the moment. I don't know why I'm saying we, but there we go. <laughs> me and the old mule, 215 at the moment. The last video in this series got 20 likes, and I think it got one dislike as well, 293 views. So that was very nice. If you feel like liking or leaving a comment, that's very much appreciated as well. And if you want to dislike it, well, someone did, so that's up to you as well. So Game Week 10 transfers cost me four points. So uh, that's been running for four weeks now, so I want to see how that did. So in Game Week 10, I took out Trent and De Silva and brought in Smith, who's a Bournemouth defender, and Zaha. And then over the last four weeks, this is how many points they got. So the two I took out would have got 14 points. The two I brought in got 23 points. Cost me four point hit. So overall, that was worth five points, even though I got a four point hit. So not great, but at least the hit was justified, I guess. Looking at the game week 12 transfers, which I also took a hit for. This is bad so far. So I took out Madison and Vardy. Uh, in game week 12 they got two points I brought in Salah and Solanke who got five points between them but then last game week Madison and Vardy got 18 points between them and Salah and Solanke got three and now Solanke might be injured so currently this is very bad so I the players I took out have got 20 points so far the players I brought in got eight points so currently this transaction I'm down 16 points with two weeks to go and there's a reasonable chance I'm going to sell Solanke so he's going to get no more for me now anyway Last week, when I did the video, I didn't know what I was going to do. But in the end, I ended up selling Perisic and I brought in Bueno, who's a Wolves defender. As it happens, Perisic got one point. Bueno didn't get anything. So that was minus one for me. But I did release two million and I'll be using that cash this game week. So that was partly about the money. But uh, it's not a big hit and I won't be referring to this one again because there's nothing to track because it didn't cost me anything. So my team lining up as it stands at the moment. I've got Edison in goal at home to Leicester. Leicester are very good at scoring goals. So that's going to be interesting to see if he keeps a clean sheet or not. Currently got Dunk at home to Chelsea. And Chelsea aren't scoring loads at the moment. And that could be a nil-nil. So I could get lucky there. Got Cancelo away to Leicester. Trippier at home to Villa. Villa scored four last game week. So that could be an interesting game. I've got Zaha at home to Southampton, Salah at home to Leeds, currently captain. Look at that. Put the old hat on now. Uh, Bowen away to Man United, potentially injured. Martinelli at home to Forest, Haaland away to Leicester, potentially injured. Mitrovic at home and Solanke at home. So because of Haaland's injury, there's a chance he's not going to play the 90 minutes, a reasonable chance he won't play the 90 minutes. And I'm a bit nervous he may come on or he'll either be on to start with and go off maybe at half time with one point or he may come on during the second half if they're only drawing or losing and get one point obviously he could come on with 10 minutes to go and get a hat trick but there's also a chance he'll get on and get one or two points so for myself I'm going for Salah as captain and I've currently got the vice captain on Martinelli if anyone asked me what they should do I would say Captain Harland because he's safer however I don't mind taking risk. We've still got a long way to go in the season. And my bench is Ward, Billing, Smith and Bueno. And if any of them come on, that's fine. I don't really mind. What I thought I'd do now is show you my current thought process for what I might do for game week 14. And I'm not affiliated with any of the websites. So I thought I'd show you some of my thoughts on Fancy Football Hub and show you some of them on Fancy Football Scout just to even it out a bit. There will hopefully be links below uh, linking to these sites. So let's have a look. So this is the Fancy Football website. There's a My Team page and you can put in here your ID. Where is it? Import your FPL team. And you can put your team ID in here. Mine 18672. Press go. And it looks at your team as it currently stands, I guess. That it's publicly available. So if I'd made transfer, this wouldn't have known about it, I think. And this predicts my points for this coming week as things stand. You can press optimize here. And it wants to see if I'm a robot. Interestingly, with these capture things here, I don't think it necessarily checks you're pressing the right boxes. I think it just checks, are you pressing them at a reasonable pace? Looks like you're thinking. So it's predicting my team as it stands would get 63.7 points. 
game week rating 87, team rating 89. This is based on Fancy Football Hub's predictions for each player. So if I click on Edison, for example, it shows how many points it's getting. he's getting the next few weeks. I can pick on players over here in the menu. I could type in here, I don't know, De Gea. De Gea, let's say, and it shows what points he would get. I'm not trying to sell this to you, by the way. I'm just showing you how it works. So they have quite a graphical view. I thought about getting into Bruyne. So one way I could do that, for example, because I've got three Man City players. I have to sell a Man City player. I'd get rid of Edison and let's supposing I got in the other Leicester keeper. And then I'd get rid of Bowen to bring in De Bruyne. And then I'm a bit short of money. So I could, for example, get rid of Solanke, who's injured. Don't mind losing him. And then I've got 5.2 to spend on a striker. So I can whisk this down to 5.2 and just choose a forward. I don't really care who. Let's have a look. Uh, Undav's a good player. It doesn't matter. He's never going to play for me. And then if I optimise, okay, I would take a minus eight here, but I've, it's now got me the 90s percent here, 66.6, a little bit better. But I've since decided I'm not going to do that. So I would have Salah, De Bruyne and Haaland, but I'm not going to do that because... Because the players I'm taking out, I think are going to get too many points. So if I reset that. So Edison, over the next three weeks, it's predicting Edison's going to get, what's that, 17 points? No, 13 points. It's predicting Edison's going to get 13 points in the next three weeks. Taking him out means I have to play Ward. And Ward's predicted to get a little over 10 points. Plus, it's going to cost me four points. So that's a real hit. And De Bruyne, although De Bruyne should get a good score. Let's have a look. Next three weeks, they got De Bruyne is getting, what's that, 22, 23 points, something like that. And Bowen's only on a lot less than that. De Bruyne might not get that many points. De Bruyne could have a quiet couple of game weeks or he could absolutely smash it. Something else I thought about doing was removing Smith. And getting in an Arsenal defender because I have no Arsenal people at the back. So the obvious one would be White for who's available and not injured. So I'd then obviously switch White with Bueno like that. That was a possibility, but I don't really care for Arsenal's next two games, Chelsea and away to Wolves. On top of that, Arsenal are seeming a bit tired at the moment. And... Going back a few months would be brilliant to have Martinelli, Jesus and Saka for this coming weekend at home to Nottingham Forest. But Forest have started to play quite well recently. Like I said, Arsenal, are they getting a bit tired? So I'm. it's not worth me breaking my team to get in, as far as I'm concerned, Saka. Although I could do, I could swap Zaha or Byrne for Saka. That wouldn't be a problem. But I don't want to. What I'm currently thinking I'd do, but I have not. don't know this for sure, is... I don't want to get rid of Haaland. <laughs> get rid of Solanke. And I'd, for the third time this season, see if he can bite me three times, get in Darwin, remove Bowen, who's a bit of a doubt, and get in Rashford. So if I do that, I'll let this whole thing optimise it for me. That's predicting 66.6 .6 points, but it's only costing me a four-point hit. These are up in the 91%. Looking at future game weeks, this suddenly jumps to 100, whatever teams you have so getting game week to 100% for future game weeks seems pretty meaningless to me but for game week 15 it's got 57 points but again I could optimize it somewhat probably Let's see if it changes there 64 points based on its predictions this isn't necessarily the team I would do but it might be that and then game week 16 it says 67 points is that optimized 69 and a half points so uh, that's right so this is a nice tool to play with you can mess about and if you've got an account with them it saves your team you can look forward to see what's happening so this is a lot of fun but the thing to remember is this is just their predictions and their predictions are sometimes wildly out but that's true for all the predictor sites so it's interesting for a guide but beyond that it's just a bit of fun really this is the equivalent page on the uh, Fancy Football Scout, like I said, no affiliation like the other sites. This is my current team and it says before any transfers, because I can play a bit of transfers here, 
how many points it think I get it. And this automatically works out who you should bench and who your captain and vice captain would be. So to look at the same thing, if I take out Bowen and I take out Solanke and I can add a player. So it's not got the same graphical front end, but that's OK. So I put in Darwin and I'll add the player. What's the other one? United midfielder Rashford. What this site does, which is quite nice, apart from automatically working it all out, it shows before transfers and after transfers what you'd get. So by Fancy Football Scouts rating, I'm more than four points off in the first game week 14 by doing these transfers. Game week 15, I'm half a point worse off. Game week 16, I'm about the same. So overall, I'd make four points. So it has the fun factor and Darwin it doesn't obviously it doesn't know how many minutes Darwin's going to play what's Rashford going to do so like I said it it is some fun but I could try other things I could say okay what if I didn't want Salah and I took him out and played someone else or so as you can see you, you can just mess about with this as much as you like I could reset this so I could try something completely different for example I said about taking out Smith if I can find him I can take out Smith and I said about what if I added white defender white what happens so overall this makes me two points but it doesn't cost me anything so that's only one transfer cost me nothing so there's pros and cons in both sites something I prefer about fancy football scout when they show their predictions it's in a table form so it hasn't got all the fancy filters on etc and you can narrow it down to just defenders or midfielders something I like is you can select it all copy and paste into excel and then play with the data yourself which is what I like to do and also feed it into my own database. Whereas with Fancy Football Hub, they've not got this nice tabular view, which is much nicer and easier for me to work with. So I'm not sure if that was interesting or not really. I don't know what I'm going to do. I genuinely don't know. I'll probably do it shortly before 11 o'clock tomorrow, unless I think there are price changes tonight. At the moment, my most likely plan is Darwin and Rashford in for Slanky and Bowen. But I don't know. When I do do it, I will intend to put it up on Twitter. But I'll obviously not be doing another video before the deadline. Let me know what you think about that. I know there are other players that are popular like Elmron, etc. But I just think Rashford may be a bit more fun. So I don't have Foden. I don't have Saka. I don't have Arsenal defence. So all of those areas could really sting me. Game week 14 and the next two game weeks. So I need to hope that Foden gets one point. Saka gets one point. Nottingham Forest score a goal. That would all be good stuff for me for my team. Chances are none of that's going to happen though. <laughs> All right. Hope you have a nice time for Game Week 14. Thank you for watching. Please let me know what you're doing. Bye.